Hey there, I'm Annie Dickerson. And I'm Susan Elliott. And on today's show, boy, oh boy, we have a really exciting one for you. This is one of my personal mentors. Her name is Karen Chong. And I first found Karen, gosh, about, actually about 18 months ago, somebody recommended her frequency work to me. I had no idea what that meant at the time. And honestly, I first listened to her podcast and I was like, I have no idea what she's talking about. And I just put it away and thought, this isn't for me. And lo and behold, as the months went by, you know, as things do, things started to come up in, in the business and in my life that I was challenged with. And all of a sudden, by the end of uh, last year, I was like, wait a second whatever happened to that Karen lady? <laughs> and not thinking that she was the answer, but just something was prodding me like, oh, go, go listen to that again. So I did. And at the time I was experiencing a lot of anxiety, which is not normal for me. Um, but I was experiencing a lot of anxiety that was kind of holding me back. I didn't know what to do with it. And through listening to her podcasts and trying her GFCs, her group frequency calibrations, which she'll talk more about in the conversation. Um, I gave them a try and oh my goodness, they changed my life. And so I've been working at a deep advanced level with Karen um, ever since. I've been on multiple retreats with her. And this is this is why I'm so excited to bring this work to this podcast and to you, the listener, because I've found it to be one of the most life-changing things for me. And so I'm eager to hear what you think and for you to try it out too. And I've been seeing this from the outside for the last 18 months, I suppose. So <laughs> yes. seeing you like start to do all this work and then go on these bigger and bigger retreats and hearing, you know, about your morning meditations, but they were not really meditations, but there's doing this work. And it's it's been really neat as a friend to sit next to you and sort of see your commitment and actually see how you've kind of gotten deeper into the into the topic. So I am so curious. I was so curious to meet Karen today. And she shocked me in that she was one of the funnest guests we've ever had. There's so many of us who actually are pretty good. We're pretty successful. We've achieved a lot of really neat things, but we're still finding that like something doesn't feel right. And I don't think that we would be in this place. I don't think Karen would be offering what she's offering if we weren't the kind of people to just like continue to ask the next question. And through doing this work, I kid you not, I mean, it almost seems trite to say that it has changed my life, but it really has. I feel like before there were so many walls I'd hit up against and be like, I don't know how to do that. I'm not sure I can do that. And now with access to this work, I'm like, doesn't matter. Throw it at me. I can handle it. With that, let's dive into our conversation with Karen Chong. Karen, welcome to the show. How are you today? I am super great and I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness. We are so excited to have you here. When I told my kids that we were going to have you on the show today, they were like, oh, Karen's coming on the show. You're a super celebrity in our household. <laughs> And, you know, I've tried a lot of things over the years. Being an entrepreneur is so challenging on so many fronts. It forces you to yeah. look at yourself from every different angle. It's like this oven that's just, you're just in this heat all the time. And so it forced me to then look outside of myself for these different ways that I could grow um, in a new way than I had before. Let's start there is take us back to that, that time when you were, you felt like you were walking through the fire and you didn't know where else to turn. And thus it started you on this path. I mean, I'd been on a, on, a, on a path of seeking for about 25 years. And the reason I started on that path was because I had a health crisis. So I had, you know, the equivalent of like really severe, like mosquito bites from underneath my chin all the way to my ankles. And I was just itching all the time and I couldn't sleep. And I um, basically became um, suicidal at that point. So then I ended up um, going to see uh, my aunt in Alberta, Canada, of all places, to see an acupuncturist who basically could see on the energetic level. And f into five weeks later, he shifted me from being like this hot mess into like a, a totally different person. And so that catalyzed my journey of my spiritual seeking. I was like, what is there beyond the scene that causes the physical to be the way it is? 
So fast forward many, many years, like I said, almost two and a half decades. And the thing that I was at is that Chris and I were real estate agents actually in San Francisco. And we had our own uh, practice. And on the outside, we looked really successful. Despite all of this external trappings of, wow, your life looks amazing, uh, I was running really, really deep patterns of scarcity. So meaning I was always, always afraid. Internally, it felt like we would never had enough. And so I would just drive our team to produce more because I was sitting in my own fear. And then, you know, I was exploring all these different energetic modalities, you know, including network spot analysis and a whole bunch of other things that were more like sort of out there in left field and implementing them in our business. So that prompted the question, what is it within me that is causing this state of fear and this state of scarcity? And then Sometimes when you ask questions like this, the universe answers. And my answer came in the form of frequency work. And I was sitting in my acupuncturist's office. I just received acupuncture. And she said to me, have you ever heard of frequency work? And as soon as she said those words, it's like that scene in the matrix, you know, with the bullets and like time goes slow and he's like doing the thing. It was kind of like my very <laughs> mundane version of that, where literally time felt like it slowed down and I could see like every angle of the room as I was turning. And I knew in that moment, I don't, but I need to, because that is the answer to the question that I've been asking. So that was where I was. And then from then on, it began my journey in terms of releasing what I call distortion patterns. I love that you started like it, the the real estate aspect, the entrepreneurial aspect, like what Annie just mentioned, that is like, it's kind of like the baby step into seeking a little bit. It's the baby step into looking yeah. into, is there a different way for me to embody my full self in this life? I wonder if the listener is thinking like, how do I know when that deep moment happens to me? Will I miss it? So if you're meant to learn a lesson in its lifetime, at first, when you ask the question, it'll give you a little feather, right? So maybe you're not like on death's door, but like you break your leg, right? So now you're lying in bed and you're thinking to yourself, oh God, now I can't, whatever. And you start to look at podcasts because you're lying in bed and you're bored, right? And then something opens. And then if you don't listen to that, then like the truck will come by and smack you fully where, you know, it kind of looks more like a crisis. A lot of people have to get to the point sometimes for the crisis to happen, to begin in that journey of that exploration of that internal um, growth, that internal um, path that you know that you are called to, but you're not sure exactly what that means and how it's going to look and what it should look like and who's going to help you. But you know that it calls to you in some way. In my perspective of the world, and you know, a lot of scientists will say this as well, everything is vibrating. The higher vibrating order dictates the lower vibrating order. So to me, everything in your life is a reflection of what happens at frequency level first. So if you change things at frequency level, your physical reality will change around that almost like extraordinarily quickly. I will say almost instantly, but it depends on how much distortion you have. And a distortion is caused by things like what your ancestors have experienced and how it affects how your genes express and the choices you make, you know, your religious uh, conditioning, your cultural conditioning, your past lives, all those things impact the distortions that you experience now in this lifetime. So talk to us about a, a GFC, a group frequency calibration. What is that? Yeah. And why is it that that falling asleep can be a good thing. One of the things that happens sometimes because the frequency resonance that we're in when I'm giving a group frequency calibration, whether you're aware of it or not, is high for some people in the sense that your conscious mind can't stay in that resonance. So your higher self will kind of push you into sleep so that you can release some of your distortion patterns in a way that's more efficient. As your journey um, with frequency work continues and your vibrational level rises, what you need to do to be present in a GFC changes. So you can come into the space of more stillness without needing to do as many things. You can sit and it doesn't feel like you're just waiting for the clock to go. I remember at the beginning when I started, I was like, wow, that seems like a really long time, 20 minutes to sit and do a guided meditation. Now I could scan my whole body, be present. And it's yeah. so empowering, just like you said, to know that, wow, I went through that journey. I did that. I started with five minutes, couldn't sit still for five minutes. And now, you know, in the, in the time leading up to some of the retreats that I've been on with you, um, I was doing three for hours. I've been doing this 
um, uh, a different form of frequency work for a little bit for, like I said, intensively for two years, because I just wanted to feel better. I ended up going to this um, retreat. Now I'm a growth oriented person. I enjoy growth. So I go to the retreat and I get there and I'm an, an aware enough at this point, because, you know, my intuition has gotten clearer that the field of the retreat itself, meaning in this room with the people who are there ostensibly to do this work was unstable. I had this knowing I was like, I am not supposed to be here. I decide that I'm going to meditate on my own. So there I was in my little studio apartment in Sedona. So I started this meditation. I did not think it was going to be nine hours. I didn't think it was going to be anything. I just sat on the couch and started meditating. And what I did was I was like, okay, I know intuitively that I need to raise my resonance. And I could feel myself passing through different resonance levels. I felt at first the resonance of light. And then I rose through another layer. I just knew I had another layer. Don't ask me how. I just knew. When I got to this layer, it was just love. Unbelievable love. And as I rose higher in the resonance of love, it felt like my heart was exploding. I was just like, oh my God, this is so intense and amazing. And then I hit the layer of consciousness, which was just awareness, just this vast awareness. And then I hit a ceiling. But I knew in that moment I had to surrender. And I had to surrender who I was which was absolutely terrifying. And so I did it. And then all of a sudden I could feel this expansion. And then I was in this space where I was everything and everything was me. And at some point after being in this space for a very long time, I came back. When I opened my eyes, I was like, wow, it's kind of dark. I looked at the clock and I was like, oh my God, it's been nine hours. And then because I was in Sedona, I literally would go on hikes and I would go on hikes and I could see the illusion. I was like, it's like I can put my hand right. It's like the matrix, like literally. You can put your hand right through the thing. I was like, that is crazy and amazing. And this illusion is not to punish us. It's here for us to grow from, to, to become as magnificent as. Like that is our nature. And I could, it was just this, like, it was like, I was like, ah! I couldn't believe how amazing it was. And I realized I could still perceive frequencies. And then a friend who I, who overlapped with me for 12 hours, who I hadn't seen in like eight years, happened to stop by. And when she started to talk to me about some kind of problem she was having, I was like, do you want help with that? And that's how it began. All of this has been in part leading up to something I know our listener would love to be able to do, which is to manifest a, whatever yeah. they want in their life. Talk yeah. to us about how frequencies interplay with manifestation and what you're talking That's about right. at the quantum level. So first of all, you need to clear the distortion around manifestation and receiving what it is that you want. Most of the methodologies, because I can't claim to know all of them. So with most of them, they're from the level of the mind. Everything in your life comes down to how high your frequency resonance is, including your thoughts, your emotions, what your body looks like, who's around you, who you get to collaborate with, how much abundance you have. The higher you vibrate, the more clearly you can manifest. So the thing is about quantum manifestation, it is using the frequency resonance of the quantum, which is beyond the mind, which will allow your resonance to be much higher. So now you have the rocket fuel combination of releasing your distortions and your resonance being so much higher. So that way you can manifest more clearly, more efficiently, and more consistently. So I remember back when I first, when we first started this business, I wanted to manifest a house with a view. For years, nothing. And one day, one of my coaches at the time, she said, well, but if you had that house, would you be able to do your best work in that house? And in that moment, my distortion pattern at that time became super clear to me. And I was giving out that signal that was like, <laughs> but I was holding myself back because I didn't think I deserved it. And so as soon as I cleared that, I kid you not, within three months after that, we were in this house. This is a house I've talked about many times on this show. The top of the hill, we have sweeping views of the Bay Area. I can see four bridges from my window. It is better than anything I could have imagined. We're going to move into the final part of our show, our Life and Money Show Spotlight Round. So share with us one thing that you're doing to help make the world a better place, whatever that means to you. My answer is to raise my frequency resonance. Because whether you're aware of it or not, you have a ripple effect. My purpose is to empower and to catalyze a rise in consciousness. I'm not here to save you. I'm here to help you understand how to save yourself so that when you do the work, you are the one who's free. <laughs>